Welcome back to Tech Mimic, where you can simply view, imitate, replicate, and get on with your day. Today, we're going to configure the Qubit Torrent web user interface that allows for remote control of the Qubit Torrent client via the web browser, even from a remote location away from home. I'm using the most recent version of Qubit Torrent, which at the recording of this video is version 5.0.2. Click Tools in the menu and then select Options. And on the left hand side, select Web UI. The web user interface is by default not enabled, so let's start by enabling it and check the box. Standard, the web UI will bind to your machine's IP address on port 8080, which is a very standard web server port. This is already occupied on my machine by another web service, so let's change the port to 8090. We will come back to a couple of the options here later. For now, let's start simple and check the basic functionality first. The default user account is admin with a default password of admin admin. Of course, we need to change that immediately. Select a username and a password. Standard, all clients will need to authenticate, but this can be changed in such a way that the IP addresses from your local network have direct access by bypassing authentication or even for remote IP addresses that you have placed on a whitelist. After five unsuccessful authentication attempts, the client will be locked out for a duration of 3600 seconds or one hour. This setting will prevent brute force dictionary attacks and related against your Qubit Torrent web UI. I won't go over all of the options, but it's nice to see that things are highly configurable. You can even change the default web UI look and feel, and also reverse proxy support is available. Now click OK. And for the basic functionality, we are now already done. Open a web browser and browse to your local IP address or local host address, 127.0.0.1, and connect to port 8090 or the port that you have specified. The Qubit Torrent web UI login screen appears and log in with the username and password specified earlier. If you are used to the local Qubit Torrent client, there won't be any learning curve here with the Qubit Torrent web UI. It makes sense that it is also on version 5.0.2. And besides the transfer tab for ongoing downloads, there is also the search tab for search plugins and an RSS tab to automate your downloads with RSS feeds. If this is something you would like to check out, both topics are explained in detail in their own separate videos. Links are in the description below for your convenience. From a basic functionality standpoint, you are now done. But you might have noticed that because we did not specify otherwise, the basic URL is not using an SSL certificate. So we are using regular HTTP and not HTTPS. This will be flagged up by any modern web browser, in this case Chrome, with a message indicating that the connection to this site is not secure. If you only connect to your Qubit Torrent web UI from your local network, you can just make sure that via firewalling, the IP address and port combination, the socket, is not accessible from outside of your network. But even then, HTTPS will always be better than plain old HTTP. If you are planning on remotely accessing your Qubit Torrent web UI, always go for HTTPS. To enable this, go back to the Web UI section in the options and select the box Use HTTPS instead of HTTP. Then you will have to provide a certificate file and a key file. There are many different ways to obtain these and maybe you already have one. If not, the handy link to Qubit Torrent's documentation will explain the details. Actually, this is the documentation from HTTPD, the Apache web server, that is used behind the curtains by the Qubit Torrent web UI. But basically, you will need to create a self-signed SSL certificate. Again, we will be pragmatic in the approach here. After all, this is not a security tutorial. You can read the help file for further background information or do some research on your own. If you don't already have a self-signed certificate, this explains how to create one with OpenSSL. OpenSSL is most likely installed if you are using Linux or Mac OS. If you are on Windows, you will need to install it. But maybe even faster and easier is to just spin up a Linux distribution with the Windows 11 subsystem for Linux, 
which is also available in Windows 10. And this is explained in a related video that is linked below. For the remainder of this tutorial, I will now switch to Qubit Torrent or Linux, and today I'm using Ubuntu. Also there it is on version 5.0.2. Also here, Tools, Preferences and Web UI. The port has been changed like before to 8090 and the username and password were specified. Select Use HTTPS instead of HTTP and once again open the link. I'm now going to create a self-signed SSL certificate for testing purposes and in step number 2 there is the command we need to run, so let's copy that. Also take note that in step number 3 it mentions that it is important to be aware that we are not using any passphrase. How to do this is explained as well. Now open a terminal and in my user's home directory I will create a subdirectory called search. And I will go into that directory. Paste and run the command. And answer a couple of basic questions to provide information to be entered into the certificate. This can be fake or fantasy answers because this is just for testing purposes. Self-signed certificates are widely used for testing purposes or for internal use. I will provide my country code. Organization name and common name and leave everything else blank. Now the search directory contains a .crt, the actual certificate, and a .key file, the private key file. Go back to qubitorrent and browse to the .crt file for the certificate and the .key file for the private key file. When both are correct, the orange icon with an exclamation mark should have changed to a green icon with a check mark. Click OK and open the same URL as before in a browser. This time the browser is Opera. Even though we are now using HTTPS, there is a message that the certificate authority is invalid. This is to be expected, as this is by no means an officially issued certificate. And self-signed certificates are not trusted by browsers anyway, because they are mainly used for testing purposes and internal use. Chances are that you have seen this exact message many times before. Click Help me understand and then proceed to 127.0.0.1 and there is the login page. If you click not secure in the address bar, the same message as earlier is displayed, but this time there is a certificate details option available. Click this to show the certificate being used. There the details specified during the creation of the certificate are visible, including the SHA-256 fingerprints. Also take note that the test certificate by default will expire in 30 days, 3.0. If you want this to be longer, use the test days option during the earlier OpenSSL command. Log in to Qubit Torrent. And there it is, ready to go. But this time via HTTPS, so the Qubit Torrent web UI traffic is no longer in plain text, but encrypted via SSL. As stated, this was not an in-depth security tutorial, but just a pragmatic approach. You can work with the Qubit Torrent web UI via regular HTTP just fine, but I wanted to explain the option to configure HTTPS as well. That's it, hope it helped, and if it did, please like the video and keep it up. Until next time, bye!